Hello friends and welcome back to another Marin Stack video and today we are going to deploy our app on Render. And I'm choosing Render just because I found it the easiest to work with and also the cleanest among some other platforms. And I'm not affiliated or anything with them, I just found it nice to work with. Anyway, of course you need an account on Render. So I've already done that and I'm signed in and this should be the window that you see when you sign in and you answer some questions first. So we need to create a web service and you can see here it says it's ideal for full stack build apps and that's what we have that is our main app we have two options we can either connect to our github and then deploy our app or we can just use a public git repo and we will use this one for this video but of course we need to prepare our main stack application first so let's leave this here as it is and go back to our application so in the previous video we set up mongodb atlas and using this uri that is coming from our cloud-based database we were able to connect to our database and then have some data. So this is my cloud-based database and I have two posts and one user. So of course there are a few ways you can deploy our app, there are a few methods, but what I found the easiest and cleanest is to have our front-end application inside the back-end folder or inside the root folder. So I'm going to change things around a bit here. First of all, I'm going to go back in my terminals and change this backend folder name to server just to keep things clean. It's it's not really important, but I just like to keep things consistent. Change this front end folder to client. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to move this folder inside the server folder. All right, so we have our client inside the server and then the rest of the project. And you can see I don't have the node modules or the package lock JSON in here because I downloaded this from the GitHub repo, which is linked in the description. And we have to install dependencies if we want to use it. And of course, we need to build our front end application too. So for now, we don't need to touch that one. So let's start with our server JS file. Right now, everything is focused on local development. But what we want to do is to tell Express to render some static files and then do rest of the application. So basically we want to tell our Express to render the client as well as the routes for the API. So let's do that right under the API routes. I'm going to make a comment and say, use the client app. So we need to grab our app again and use that use method and use the express.static. So we want to tell Express to use a static folder and we need to pass the address to our client folder. So basically saying client and then the folder for the built. Now we don't have the built folder at this moment. And also this is not going to work because the static folder is looking for an absolute path and this is a relative path and it's not going to work the way we want. Now we could use the their name, but this is again a problem because we are using the ES module imports that their name will not work. And let me show you what I mean. So I'm just gonna comment this out for a moment and CD into server, which is now this root folder. And up here, I'm just gonna console.log this their name. So let's just say npm run server you can see the error we get here it says their name is not defined in es module scope so we need to kind of work around this one and or you might just want to change all of these imports to the old fashioned require way but anyway we can kind of resolve this by importing two things so first we need to import path from path which is part of node then we need to import file url to path and this is an extra curly brackets from the url so these are from node right and then we need to create our own custom dir name so i'm going to make a comment here and say resolving dir name for es module first i'm going to create a file name and set it to that file url to path and import this meta url then i'm going to create another variable call it dir name and set it to path dir name and then pass that file name we just created using the URL to path. All right, so now if I console.log this their name and scroll down here, you can see it actually gives me the full absolute path to this server folder. So in order to use this their name, we need to import these two lines and also create these two custom variables. So this will resolve the situation for us. Now let's go back to our static method. And here we want to use the path join and let me move this parentheses all the way to the back and we want to use that 
their name first and then say use the client and then we want to pass the built folder here because we are going to use the built version of our react application so the folder that we are going to use is going to be called this this is because we are using Vite. if you created your app using the create react app method you would probably have a built folder when you built your application but for us it's going to be this so let's build our react app and test everything out before deploying so i'm going to make another terminal here and I'm in the server folder, right? I'm gonna cd into client, oops. First, I need to install the dependencies. And when that is done, we need to run npm run build. So let's say npm run build and just press enter. So this will create a minified version of our application. And you can see it goes inside this dist folder. And we all we have is an index.html, which is the root of our client, and then the assets, which is just one JS file and one CSS file. So in our Express app, we are telling the Express to use that folder, which is up here. So it's in the client folder and then dist. And then we want to render this index.html for every path so again i'm going to make comments here and say render client for any path that the user goes to so we can just use the app again and then use the get method in this one and the path for this one is going to be a star it means anywhere and so we can use this this is okay because in our react app we can handle the routes and just specify the routes so even if they go to a route that doesn't exist the client should handle that and says okay there is no page so show a 404 page for example anyway so this is the simple get request from express so we need to grab the request and response and then all we want to do here is to use the response object and send a file right so we need to send a file and the file we want to send is again this index.html because that is the root of our client so again just like up here i'm going to copy this whole thing and paste it down here and just add that index.html so index.html because this time we are sending a file not the directory itself okay so that's all so let me uh, format this and that's most of the work we have to do let's test this out okay so you'll notice i'm not using the npm run dev here so we are not running the client app we are only running the server right so let's open a browser and go to localhost port 4000 so i'm going to just say localhost port 4000 and press enter you can see our react app is loading and we have two posts and if we check our database here so i'm going to go to database and i'm going to go to browse collections and we have two posts there we go but you can see this is our application and it's working the way we want we can even register a new user it should work let's actually test this out in the users i have only one and it is mike so if i try to register with that email again and let's say 321 and then 321 and then press register we get email is already taken so let's this time say john press register we are back to dashboard and creating a post let's say john's post and just some dummy text here and press create we are back to the dashboard and on the home page we have three posts now and in our database we have three posts and two users but you can see it's working the way we want and we are not running our client so of course we want to run all these commands like the npm build and npm install when we deploy it and i'll show you how we can do that so but one thing i want to do here i just want to add two simple classes here so if we go to our source folder in the client source folder and then go to assets we have this app.css and we have a card here all i want to do is just say max with a screen large and mx auto and then i'm going to copy this whole thing go to pages go to layout and paste it on the nav tag we have to build our application again this is not going to work the way we want so if i just run that command again npm run build because we made some changes right so let's go back here give it a refresh there we go so it's in the middle now i'm going to break this process because we don't need it anymore so the next step is to go to our package.json because we want to create a script to run all those commands when we deploy our app i'm going to create a build script here and this is in our server i'm going to close this client so it's easier to see so we are in the backend application right and the package.json here so not the client side all right so what i want to do is uh, three commands in fact first i want to npm install and then prefix it with client so this will go inside the client folder and install dependencies for our react application then or and so i want to run another command this time i want to say npm run build so this is for building that dist folder and then again prefix it with client and then and the last one is going to be npm install 
for this server side or our backend, so we don't need to prefix it with anything. And I'm just going to save this one. When we deploy it, we are going to run this build command. So the next step is to create a repo on our GitHub and move this project to GitHub. Okay, so this is my GitHub, and I'm just going to create a public repo for this one, and I'm just going to call it MERN 2024 demo or whatever we want to call it. It should be public because we want to be able to access it in render. And I'm just going to press create repository. And then I'm going to upload those files in here. And of course we could use git push and I don't have git set up at this time and I just don't want to go through the headache and I'm just going to manually upload everything. But before I do that, I'm going to delete this node modules and in the client folder, I'm going to delete the dist as well as the node modules and these package lock JSONs. So we don't need these either. And we don't need this .env either and this readme. So of course, if you use GitHub desktop or you want to push it using the CLI, uh, using the git ignore, all of these files will be automatically ignored. But again, I don't have it set up at this point. So I'm just gonna drag and drop everything. So I just dragged and dropped all these files in this GitHub repo and it's being uploaded. All right, so you can see this is the GitHub repo and this is exactly what we have in our VS code. We have our package.json server and then the client. And if we check this package.json, we have our build command here. So this is the repo we want to use in render for deployment. So I'm just going to copy URL for this repo and then go back to render, then paste that URL here. So of course, for a real world application, you would want to connect your GitHub so it's easier to manage. So Let's press continue here and uh, let's give it a name, Marin 2024 as always. The region doesn't matter. So the branch is your repo branch, right? You know, the older version of GitHub would say master, but right now it's main. So keep that in mind. Then the root directory is of course the forward slash. So we can leave it just as it is. If we had another folder, we have to specify the root directory. So this root directory is where our server JS is sitting. Now the runtime is node. The build command is this build command. So when we deploy our app, we want to to run this one so it's npm run build all right so and the start command is node server we called our main file server.js so this is the start command and this is the build command and we are going to choose the free version and then we need to add our environment variables so we could do it one by one for example, db underscore uri this name should be the name that we use here and then I'm going to copy this and paste it here. We could also just copy paste it and paste them all here. But since we are just doing it one by one and we have only two, so we need the secret phrase, paste it here. The value is this one. And let's just press create web service. So this will take some time to create and deploy our app. But if everything goes well, it should tell us that your application is live. And then this would be the link. And you can see here, because we are using the free version, it says if it is inactive, it can delay our request by almost a minute. So using the free version is not the best, but we just want to test things out, right? So this is, you can see it's building and it says build successful and deploying. And you can see up here, in fact, that our command somewhere up here, this is the NPM command that we used, right? NPM install prefix, yada, yada, yada. So everything is being done in the background using this render. And that's why I chose this one. It's really nice and clean. They did a good job here. All right, so I canceled the deployment because I noticed it is taking quite some time. And then I noticed in our server.js, so in the GitHub repo that we just created in server.js, we have to take away this local host string here. So when we lesson to the app, we don't need this anymore. We don't want to specify the host. We just have to remove that one, commit the changes and go back to render. And I'm going to clear build cache and then deploy again. Hopefully this time it will work. Sorry for that detour. All right. So now it says your service is live and it is deployed. So if we check the log again, you can see it, our NPM commands ran and then the client was installed and we had our index and dist folder you can see here. And then it also ran our server.js file and then it says listening to port 4000 and then your service is live now if we go to this link you can see our service is live so let me zoom in here let's log in with mike at email.com and let's say three two one let's just change this one to two it says incorrect email so let's log in it will take some time because of course it's a free website and it will have some limits so let's edit this post for example i want to update it and update all right so that works let's delete it okay 
and it's gone. Let's register a new user. So let's say Sarah at email.com. Same password 321321 register. And if we check this website now, so you remember in our application, we said we want to save that email and token. And there it is. So if I zoom in here, when the user is registered, we have a user so they can use it to create a post. All right. So that's how we can deploy our app on render. And again, if you are using for a real world application, I wouldn't recommend the free version because you can see if there is an inactive in your website, the requests are going to be delayed quite a lot and it's not going to work the way you want and it's not going to be a nice experience for the users. So that's it guys. I want to thank you all for your likes, views, shares, subscribes and all your support and it is nice to see you guys liking my content. I hope you enjoyed this video and it has been helpful. See you guys at the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.